A new system for RTS project. From 200 units with 40 FPS to 300 units with 290 FPS. No more character body collisions, no more navigation agents and no more areas 3D. This is how you make a real RTS. In the quest of making an RTS from scratch in Godot, we already made some nice gameplay mechanics. The selection box, the fog of war system, the navigation of the units, all of that is fine and dandy. However, lately the performance has started to become a bigger issue as the project started to grow. As an RTS need many different elements to work together, having a performance system for units to be in and navigate around is probably the foundation for everything else in the game. So our system for the navigation of the units works, but it does not perform that well. This is probably due to the physics. Godot physics works great, but it's not built for performance. Some people, right for so, suggested to use the Jode physics. So Jode physics, if you don't know, is a multi-core rigid body physics and collision detection library suitable for games and VR applications, and is used by the game Horizon Forbidden West. So you can see how that could be quite an upgrade for the Godot physics engine when regarding performance. However, I've been thinking lately that RTSs don't need physics all that much and are not alone in there. We can see that we have comments here on the channel that are talking about why I'm even using physics in the first place, as RTSs can get away with simple mechanics. And the idea with using physics was to try to make development a little easier by using the physics solutions for collision detection and possibly to help units. However, lately I've been trying something else here. But if you are interested in upgrading or changing the physics engine to test something new for your project, go ahead and check for Godot Jolt physics engine and you're going to find a GitHub page which should give you the instructions on how to install it and there may be some tutorials out there as well. So if you want to test a new physics engine for Godot, you should give this one a go. But lately I've been trying to figure out a system where physics is not even needed. In other words, why would the RTS even needed physics in the first place? Well, using physics simulations can be a choice to handle unit-to-unit -unit collisions or a stylistic graphical choice, so you want those units bouncing around. Meaning you don't have to take care of how units will smash into each other, the physics simulation will handle that for you. Now physics based collisions are great because they make prototyping and coding super easy. Interactions between objects are just a matter of who collided with who. This is just like we did with the fog of war system. So units would have areas 3D nodes that when you collide with trees or buildings will just display them from the fog of war. But imagine having an area 3D node for every single thing in your game that is dynamic. That means if you made a forest, then we will be using thousands of areas 3D if we wanted to make a forest for RTS game. Now imagine if you wanted stones, gold, silver, crystals, every single one of those will need an area 3D node or if you wanted you could just do a bunch of clusters, but we don't want that. We want to have more of them and with more performance. So at the moment we have around 200 dynamic units, which already takes our RFPS to around 40, which is the sum of various different issues. So clearly we need to figure out something new. And I did some research and testing on my own and started to develop some interesting concepts. So one of the things that I did try was to convert all the navigation from 3D to 2D. I thought one less axis performance surely would increase because simple calculations, why not? So I created a script that would cycle through all the 3D navigation meshes points and would recreate those shapes in 2D using only the X and Z coordinates. But as it turns out, the performance was completely the same because under the hood, the code for 2D navigation it uses a fake 3D approach to it. So it's almost the same performance. So that was something that I learned later by reading GitHub pages. So yeah, that didn't work. So another idea was to convert all the, all the 3D collisions to 2D. So that would require a system that will keep track of all the objects position and synchronize them with to the collision things. But that I think would be will become a problem because we'd have different systems trying to work together and there will be issues with synchronized things and possibly it could work, yes. And will be more performance than 3D? Obviously, I think yes, because 2D collision checking might be faster than 3D collision checking. But I got a better idea than that, I think it's going to be more performance. 
So let me start with our main performance issue. So no more physics-based collision detections. That means we can strip the project from all the physics nodes. So our units don't need to be character bodies 3D anymore. We can strip them to be just a basic node 3D, which means more performance. That begs the question, how are you going to handle collision detections if you don't use physics? How are you going to detect that a thing is near another thing? The solution is by using object position against a rectangle too. So what is important about this method of detecting an object's position is that we are simulating a collision, but we are actually using mathematical functions to determine if a thing is near another thing around a radius. So first you can use rectangle 2 for a square detection, but keep in mind that this will not respect rotations, we'll have to do that manually later. But as far as you should know, this is miles faster than using collision 3D objects. So we can use the position of the object on the X and Z coordinate. We even don't need to use the Y coordinate because on RTS, normally you don't have stairs where objects can get below other objects. So in this situation, just by using X and Z, we can simulate just like in this 2D prototype. Somewhat, we can simulate a simple collision system using only the X and Z position of a 3D object using inside a mathematical function like the rectangle too. So this is miles faster and it is awesome. And this will be the system that I'm going to be applying for this project. So no longer using physics collision, but rather getting into a mathematical approach. The only thing I have to tell you is that distance from a vector to another vector will become expensive if you do for every single unit. So it will be a better approach if first you determine if they are inside a given rectangle too, then later, if we want it, we can apply the distance to a unit so we can create this spheric approach. So things like, let's say, fog of war detection and stuff like that, where usually is a spheric approach, you would like to use this system. But personally, if you reduce the size of rectangle 2, it will simulate almost the same thing with the distance 2 and it's much faster. So in my opinion, just use rectangle 2 whenever you need and it's going to be much more performance performance than the distance to. So just like we did with if units position are inside the selection rectangle, just like rec2 dot has points. But are we going to keep checking for every single unit in the game if they are inside a specific given rectangle too? No, the way we are going to do this is by sectioning the map into smaller rectangle regions. This way we can just check for specific regions first for our needs. So then we can retrieve a list of nodes that are inside that region and then this in turn we would optimize the code a little bit. So instead of cycle through all the units to find the ones you want, we are going to ask for a point for the sectioning of the map. So we are going to ask for a piece of the map and from that part of the map we are going to say from this part of the map from a specific given group some object so we don't necessarily need to cycle between every single object we can also create groups inside this region so we know exactly what is inside of it so let's say our unit needs to check for trees around so it can chop some wood well we can have a specific group for wood resources or just resources objects there's a bunch of ways where we can manage this sort of situation, so it boils down to how we are going to design this, how you're going to manage this. This is way more performant than using the collision system. So with this in mind, we should be able to do almost anything we need for the RTS using a rectangle two functions. So things like, are we inside a unit attack range? Are these units selectable? Does this unit is nearby another resource? Are units close by in need of healing? Do any artifacts are close? So basically, anything that needs to check for collisions. So we are going to basically swap our collision checking systems for our point checking system with rectangle to functions. So instead of detecting when objects enter uh, area 3D, we are going to check if the objects are inside a given rectangle too, which without a doubt will be much faster because we don't need collision objects to be checking between every single dynamic thing in our game. So it's much more performance, it's just using mathematical functions. This also means that our fog of war system will need to be updated as well. Currently we are using every 3D nodes to detect and display hidden objects. 
We, however, should be able to do the same thing with the rectangle tool or a global shader shared between all materials to simulate a better Fogovor system, so stay tuned for that as well. So this solves the issue with how we are going to detect things. But I also didn't like how the navigation system performed with our units, don't get me wrong, it works. But I wanted something more simpler and more performant. So we are going to remove the navigation agents for all of our units. This means that our units will not be able to have navigation voids anymore. But how are we going to remove our units without navigation agents? Instead of using navigation agents, all the navigation information we are going to use will be from a function from the 3D navigation server, which is navigation server 3D dot map get path. Ah, this function returns the navigation path to reach the destination from the given origin as a vector vector tree array. So this is very nice because it allows us to still use the navigation mesh and to return simple paths as packed vector tree arrays. So this will allow us to navigate units using the navigation mesh, but not in real time like the navigation agent does. Which might be at the moment the lightest built-in method in Godot to get a navigation map from a navigation mesh. Now here's the cool part, by removing navigation agents and physics nodes, I was able to navigate 300 individual units with individual paths with this method and get around 290 f frames per second. That is quite an improvement from having only 200 units with only 40 FPS. The only difference here is that our path for the navigation is not updated in real time. So we cannot have navigation avoidance between units. If we ever want something like that, we'll need to figure out something with vectors. Like a flocking behavior or something. But clipping units isn't uncommon in our RTS game anyway, so I figure out, hey, why we need navigation avoidance. So now we have some faster solutions for our problems, which is awesome. So are navigation agents useless then? Why do we need character bodies 3D in the first place then? So in the beginning, the idea was to make units with character bodies 3D so they could slip between themselves during collisions. So you do vector.slide with each one. And have the navigation agents to use the navigation avoidance so they will not move between each other. This system is ideal for FPS or third person games where you cannot have two characters crossing or clipping each other. However, for RTS, this really doesn't matter at all. Clipping should not be an issue, performance is more important. And sadly, those collisions would cost a lot, so I even tried to adjust it so we can keep the units floating above and we disable units to units collisions. So in theory, we actually disabled the functionality we built on previous tutorials, but that was because the performance was not that great. But even with those optimizations, the performance was still not ideal. And yes, while not, I did not have tested the Jolt physics engine, I still think that abandoned physics altogether is going to be a great benefit for RTS, because it does not need that. The only thing we needed for the physics was the collision detections, which we already have an alternative to work with, which is the rectangle tool. We did refine and optimize a system that now we are ditching and changing. The information you learn is still useful if you want to do other projects. So this also somewhat ties back into my idea with navigation avoidance agents and formations. So if we are moving units in a group, like a cohesion group moving inside a formation, why do you need exactly unit avoidance? It's just a, a visual cue, it's just to look nicer, I guess, to make units avoid one another, so it, it looks cool. But aside from that, is that really necessary? I don't think so. If units will start to move in a formation, in a group, we don't need to avoid one another. So yeah, I don't think that's necessary. And I did not like how the units avoid one another so sometimes they stuck around the corners and they try to figure out a way to move and they think a lot so the system for the navigation is very reactive and for an rts and action games we need fast paced solutions so this is not exactly a defect of the navigation system it's just a reality when you have a bunch of 100 units together moving around there's a bunch of things that are happening behind the scenes that you, that you don't know so having the units try to figure in real time navigation avoidance and the pathing solutions, it, this is to be expected somewhat. So yeah, 
So I was not a fan for the navigation and also I had some big issues with trying to stick units to a precise location because if you don't know with the navigation uh, agents they need a minimum distance to cut to the next path position or to say that they reach the farm destination otherwise they just keep jigging between a given path points and never reach the, the distance you set as a threshold. So I wanted a more precise control of the units and there's nothing wrong with that. If you decide to use the navigation agents, by far, just use them. And I am going to use them on other projects, or surely I am going. The benefits of using navigation agents is very well much needed in some projects. But for on our specific case with RTS, unit clipping is not a big issue. So I figured, hey, and let's just remove this entirely. Something I also want to implement in RTS is grouping units. We shouldn't be needing to have units get a path to their destination by themselves. A group should request a path to a destination, which could be far, but only one path per group. Meaning units should seek a path to their group position and the group to the wanted destination. This should improve performance as well, because the unit's path should be shorter, moving to stay only inside the group, while the group is going to be asking a path to a longer destination. So with this idea in mind, implementing formation-based movement is going to be required, so stay tuned for that as well. I already did some prototyping and I think I got formations figured out. So stay tuned because I'll be posting a video about that as well. So these are the main changes that we are going to be doing to our project and this is not a straight journey so I apologize if you joined and you are expecting to, at the end of this series, have a finished project. I could not do that with this series, you see I am all over the place, so I change a lot of stuff. So this also was a learning journey for me, making a YouTube channel and posting tutorials, that shit is not easy, believe me, especially if you're just starting out, there was a lot of things that I had to learn. So hopefully the next video series and the next tutorial series I'm going to make on other project types, on other stuff, they're going to be more of a linear experience and it would be better for you to watch it. But hopefully by dealing with the main issues you're going to face when you try to build your own RTS, by dealing with the main mechanics of the RTS jar, you, I can actually help you with developing your RTS because there's a couple of tutorials that are, you cannot find online. There's some knowledge that you cannot find. But hopefully I can inspire more people to also keep trying to make more tutorials and uncover more stuff that I will also like to learn. So this is knowledge and knowledge is power for everyone. I also apologize for the lack of videos between weeks. Life has been getting in the way lately, but that's no excuse. So. I'll be posting regularly back again and hopefully to see you on the next video. So that is all I have for you guys. Hopefully you like the, this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.